Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of 3D tabs when you are carving a 3D model. I'm using Aspire version 10.507 for this demonstration, but this works exactly the same way in vCarve Desktop and vCarve Pro. To get started, I have a single sided project for this part of the demonstration. And I'm going to go down into my clip art and I'm going to choose a fairly steep dome. Now, I don't even know what size this is. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the process. So I have my dome here in my material. I'm going to go over to my modeling tab and I'm going to look at the properties. The shape height is 2.0. 7492 inches, which is thicker than the three quarter inch material thickness I have. But for this model, I want it to be three quarters of an inch. So I'll set my shape height at three quarters of an inch and let that update, then close it. Now I'm going to tile my 2D view and 3D view vertically here so we can see there is my dome. Now I want to put a vector around this dome. So I'll select it and come up here under my modeling tools to create a vector boundary around the selected component. And if we zoom in here real tight, we can see that we have created a vector around my dome. Now the problem comes in if I were to Go ahead and select this vector and calculate a 3D finishing toolpath. I automatically go into material setup. The model position is in the center. There is no gap above or below. And that's all fine. If I come into the 3D finishing toolpath using a quarter inch ball nose to the selected vector, with a boundary offset of a quarter of an inch to get the tip of that bit away from the sidewall of the model. And I calculate that toolpath. Let me zoom in on my 3D here. When I preview this toolpath, we can see already that the model is being carved all the way down to and through the material. I'll go ahead and stop my simulation here. It's already being carved through the material. I haven't even gotten a chance to go over to my profile toolpath to set up tabs. This little skin of material here is not going to hold this model in place when it comes time to do my profile toolpath or if I'm going to v-carve something on the top of this dome. I need a way to make sure this stays secure in the material while I'm doing all these other operations out here. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'll close my preview. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this toolpath because I'm not going to need this. I'm going to create a new toolpath when this is finished. So we'll zip back over here into my 2D view and zoom back out to center up. What I want to do now is I want to add tabs into this 3D model while it is still in the modeling stage. And Vectric has thought of this for us. If we come down into our clip art folder, we look right up here, we have 3D tabs. And I'll click on that folder, and we see we have several different styles of tabs down here. We have circular tabs, which are round. We have triangular pyramid shaped tabs. We have flat tabs. We have they call them truncated pyramids, meaning they have a flat top. They're at various angles. We have 30 degree 
45 degree and 60 degree angles on these pyramids. Then we have something called a wave, which is kind of like a rounded pyramid. Now, each of these has its own application depending upon the profile that you're carving out here. If this is going to be a rounded edge, I tend to use the circular tabs up here. Now, you'll notice with these three circular tabs, they have their circular underscore. This one is 0 0.25. This one is 0 0.5. And this one is 0 0.75. That is the width of the tab. Quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch. Now, for something of this size, I'm going to go ahead and use quarter inch tabs on it. And we'll show you how to get these put into place. I'll just double click one to put one in the center of my material. Then I'm going to bring it out here, just off the edge. Let me go ahead and tile my 3D view so you can see what we have going out here. So I have my tab out here off to this corner. I want to go over to the modeling tab and I want to look at the properties of that tab. The shape height is an eighth of an inch. That may or may not be good enough for you. In fact, I'm going to modify it so that it's a quarter of an inch tall. Give it a chance to update and we see over here in our 3D view that it's a bit bigger. Right now it's called circular underscore 0 0.5. That's fine, except I want to change the name. So I'll go ahead and come up here into my properties and I'm just going to call it tab. That way I know what it is. I'm not going to add any base height. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. We'll close that. Now if I look over here my tab is quarter inch diameter and a quarter inch tall. Now over here I'm going to go ahead and expand my 2D view and I'm going to select this tab. Then I'm going to press the number zero on my keyboard and keep pressing to rotate that 45 degrees. Now I'll zoom in and kind of move this tab up here forward about like so, so that it overlaps into my model right here. Now I'll retile my 3D view and I can see about how far that tab is embedding itself into my model. Now I might want to go a little further than this, so let me go ahead, zoom in on my 2D view, bring it in just a little bit more, come back over to the 3D view, and I think I prefer that. So we have it fully embedded inside the dome here. Now I'll zoom out here in my 3D view, because I forgot to mention one thing. If we look at my tab, the combine mode is set to merge, and that's how I want it set. My dome dish is set for merge, my tab is set for merge. I want this tab to merge with my dome. Back out to a straight Z view, I'll go back over to my 2D view, and we'll zoom back out. Now one tab isn't enough. I need to create a total of four. So I'll select that tab, go over to my drawing tab, and I'm going to do a circular array. So I'll click on that icon. Set object size, that's fine. I'm not going to touch that. But I want my rotation center where this is going to rotate on to be my x0, y0. I want to rotate the copies and I want a total number of four. 
I'm going to use a total angle of 360 degrees, and I'll click Copy. And that has created four 3D tabs right along here. I can now close this. Now, when I go over to calculate the tool path, I'll select once again my vector here. I'll go into a 3D finishing tool path, and again, I'm not going to change anything. I'll use the same ball nose. I want to machine to the selected vector with a boundary offset of a quarter of an inch, and I'll calculate that tool path. And now I can preview. And as you see, now these tabs have become a part of the model. I no longer have to worry about this bit cutting this real thin skin because the tab that's going to secure this model is now a part of the model. And this helps out tremendously, believe me especially if you're carving a particularly large model. I can use screws out here to mount my material and not have to worry about whether it's going to move or go any place. I now have quarter-inch thick tabs here. Now, on the downside of this is we are definitely going to have some tabs to clean up. So when I come along and cut these tabs, I will have to use chisel, knife, sandpaper to clean up these tabs. But it sure beats the heck out of this breaking loose, especially when you have more V-carving or more decorative work to do out here. So the use of 3D tabs is fairly straightforward when it comes to a single-sided project. When it comes to a double-sided project, however, it's a little bit more involved. Let's go ahead and we'll create a double-sided project. And I'm going to set my Z0 position to the material surface for both sides. When I flip my piece, I'm going to flip side to side, from left to right. Because we're using 3D models, I've got my modeling resolution set to very high. And we'll click OK. I am starting out working on the top, up here. So we'll go back over into my clip art folder and we'll get the top set up. And we'll I'll do a simple one like I did just a minute ago. We'll go for the 90 degree dome. The size doesn't matter. I'll come over here into my modeling tab. With it selected, I'll go into the properties and I'm going to set this for half of my material thickness. Half of three quarters of an inch is three eighths of an inch. So that's 0.375. Let that update. We'll close it. Now I'll switch over to the bottom side. Again, come into my clip art, select the same dome, go into the modeling tab, check the properties, and again, 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. Let that update, and we'll close that. Again, I need to draw a vector boundary around my component, and I'll do the same for the top. Okay, now I have my vector. And again, we will have the same issue here, but it's going to be slightly different. Let me scoot over here, and I'll select my model, select my vector do a 3D finishing tool path, and again, we're on the top. My model thickness is 3 quarters of an inch. It's centered 
in the middle. All of this is correct. Let's go into the 3D finishing toolpath. Again, using the same ball nose, the selected vector, boundary offset of a quarter of an inch, and we'll calculate that toolpath. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the bottom. I'll go into my 2D view, close the preview, and again, select my model, select my vector, 3D finishing toolpath. I'm going to make no changes. I'll calculate that. And now I'll go ahead and preview all sides. Okay, with our tool paths previewed, we can see we again have the same issue. We have two models that are half the thickness of our material, and that's going to cut them out. They're going to break loose. Well, we can't have that. So we're going to have to apply 3D tabs. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. I'll go ahead and reset my preview. Go back to a straight Z view. Close my preview. Come back over into the drawing side. And I'm going to go back up to the top. Now again, what I want to do is I want to add tabs, but I have to remember to base them off the center of the material. So we'll come over here into our clip art library, go back over to 3D tabs, and I have to remember now that the tabs I'm going to put out here off to the side are only going to attach to this model. They're not going to attach to the bottom. So we'll fix that. We'll go ahead and double click my circular tab and again I'll drag it down here. This time I'll tap the number 9 to rotate it 45 degrees. I'll tile my 2D and 3D view. Come over here and drag it into my model just so that it's fully embedded. Come over to my modeling tab and again, I'm going to make sure it's selected. Click on the properties. And again, I'll rename this tab. And again, I'll bring the height up to one quarter of an inch. Let that update. Close. Now, once again, I want to zoom in over here. And again, I want to Go into Move and Transform mode and scoot this tab in just a little bit further. There we go. I don't want it completely in there. All right, now we're set. So I'll select the single tab. We'll expand my 2D view. Zoom out. Once again, we'll come over here into Circular Array. The object size I'm going to leave alone. But the rotation center is X0, Y0. Rotate the copies, four copies, using a total angle of 360. Click Copy. Now I can close that. And I want to make sure that all four of my tabs are selected. I can look over here in my component tree and I can see that all four of them are in the merge combine mode. With all four of these tabs selected, I'm going to right click and copy to other side. So now when I come over into my 3D view, and I'm looking at the top, I can see that I have my tabs there as part of the model. Click over to the bottom, and the tabs are right there on the bottom as well. Go back to the top. Now I can come back over, and I'll need to recalculate this toolpath. So I'll double click on my 3D finishing toolpath, make sure I have my vector selected, and now 
this tab is part of this 3D model on both sides. I'll recalculate that toolpath. When I take a look at my preview, I can see that my tabs are there. I'll switch over to the bottom, back to my 2D view, go back into my 3D finishing toolpath to recalculate it, make sure my vector is selected, and calculate. Now, when I preview all sides, those tabs will stay in place. Now with our preview complete, we can take a look at both sides. We're looking at the bottom right now, and we see that sure enough that ball nose is going to try to mill through the material here. We have our model on the bottom. We have our model on the top. But we have our four tabs holding our model in place. Now. Let me go back to a straight Z view. Now we need to think about our profile cutout. That also presents us with a problem because if we just do, and I'm looking at the bottom here again, you can tell because of the yellow, orange, amber, whichever color you decide they are, rulers here. If I do just a standard profile cutout, that bit is going to cut through these tabs, and we don't want it to do that. So we'll have to add tabs again in our profile toolpath with a little bit of a difference. So let me go over here. I've got my vector selected. I'll do my profile cutout. My start depth is going to be zero. My cut depth is going to be the thickness of my material. I'm using a quarter inch end mill cutting to the outside of this vector. For this demonstration, I'm not going to do a separate last pass. I am going to add tabs to the toolpath. Now, here is the difference. The length of these tabs is going to be the same diameter of these models. They're quarter inch wide 3D tabs. I want quarter inch wide tabs also. The thickness is going to be the same as my material thickness. When a 2D profile toolpath is calculated, it calculates from the bottom and it takes into account the entire material thickness. If I use quarter inch thick tabs like I normally do, it's going to machine through these tabs and then start cutting the tabs I'm getting ready to apply a quarter inch above the machine bed. That's not what I want. I want this bit to come around and miss these tabs all the way. I don't want this bit to touch these tabs. It can cut into the side a little bit here, to the edges. That's fine. But I don't want it to cut through these tabs. So I'm going to set my thickness to the material thickness, then when the bit comes around, it will stop, lift up, move over, and then plunge back in and finish the cut. I'm not going to use 3D tabs for this. If I start ramping here, it's going to cut into this tab and it may break loose. I want this bit to avoid these tabs altogether. So let me go ahead and edit my tabs. And I'm going to place my tabs right over the top of these 3D tabs. That one needs to get moved over. I want to try to be close to the middle. It doesn't have to be absolutely in the middle. But I want it to be as close to the middle of this tab as I can get. I'll close this. And we'll just rename this Cutout. And I'll calculate that toolpath. And we'll go ahead and preview it. 
Now, when we take a look at it here, in the profile, the bit has kind of come over and it's gotten close to carving into the tab, but it left these tabs alone. It did not cut through them. Now, I'm going to add a toolpath here that you will not use. This is just for my demonstration so I can show you what's happening here. Go over to my drawing tab and I'm going to offset this vector outwards by an eighth of an inch. Close that, come over, and I'm going to do a second profile cutting all the way through the material. And I'll calculate that preview it and this is just to show you what's going on here so I can double click out here and get rid of the waste. So when I cut this free from the material this is the tab I'm going to have left to clean up after. Now as I said before that's a lot of material to clean away. You may not want to use quarter inch thick tabs. You might want to go thinner but it needs to be enough of a tab to hold this model in place. And the edge of your model is going to dictate what style of tab you're going to use. If you're doing something with a straight flat edge, then a square tab might be the better bet for you. If you're doing something that has a profile out here, be it a curve or a step-down profile like an OG, or a roundover, or a chamfer, or something like that. You might want to look into the different shapes and different styles of tabs and preview them before you save G-code and go outside and cut them. Because even though we have these tabs now. Let me re let me just go ahead and undo last to bring my material back. I'll close this. We'll go back to a straight Z view. Even though we have these tabs set here now, if we don't like them, we can change them. They remain individual components. We can take one out by just selecting it, deleting it, go back into clip art, and maybe we decide we want to use a larger tab instead of that quarter inch. We'll have to recalculate our toolpath, but it can still be done. They remain separate components. Now I'm going to hold down Control, tap Z to get rid of that change and I'll delete that tab. It becomes a little bit more complex when you are doing a double-sided project than when you're doing a single-sided project. But even on the single-sided project we still need to do a profile cutout so I would do the same thing. Close my preview, go into my 2D view, Select my vector, go into a profile toolpath, my cut depth, three quarters of an inch thick, my tool, a quarter inch end mill, machining to the outside of the vectors, add tabs to the toolpath. Now, because this is a single sided job and it's going to be calculated from the bottom, I don't have to go so thick. I only have to worry about these tabs down at the bottom of the material. So I can go with 0.25, edit my tabs, and again come in here close to the center, close that, I'll calculate my toolpath, and we'll preview it. Now, again, because this is a single-sided job, it calculated the position of these toolpaths from the bottom of the material. I did not have to go that thick 
with the tab height in the profile toolpath. So single-sided job, you can adjust your tab thickness to be the same thickness as the model. On a double-sided project, tab thickness, the same thickness as the material to avoid cutting out those tabs. So I hope you got something out of this video. Now later on this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss 3D tabs, 3D carving, 3D roughing, or 3D finishing, anything that I have demonstrated in this video. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a good reason to go ahead and click that red subscribe button down there below this video. And click that little bell right next to it. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So... I do hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.